Hi everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. This cool moon capsule drawing. It's great for beginners. We use a lot of cool techniques so you will hopefully learn a lot or you will have a lot of fun with it if you're a pro. So if you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials. So if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe. I also offer extra tutorials over on Patreon. So check that out if you would like to. I have it linked in the description below. But before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette. I have it linked in the description below. It's totally free to download. Just open up the file that downloads on your iPad and it will automatically pop into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen and in the description below so that you can use those to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we'll get started. Okay, these are all of the colors that we'll be using in today's video. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing that we will do is set the background color. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu, click on this background color layer and select the first color of the first row of the color palette to fill it in with this color. Okay, and then the next few colors are for like the background. We're going to have like a glow around our capsule and some like kind of shading on the left and right side of our background, but we'll do that at the end once we have everything in place. So next we're just going to jump straight into the capsule drawing. So to do that, we will go to our layer menu, just make sure we're on layer one. We will grab the first color on the second row of the color palette. And we will grab our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. I have it set to 100%, that's fine. And then we'll zoom out here and I'm just going to draw a nice good size circle. Hold it down, touch my finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle. And then we'll set the size a good ways. This is going to be for the top and bottom of the capsule. So just a good medium size here, like so. Go ahead and fill it in. Then we'll grab our arrow tool on uniform and you can adjust the size if necessary, up or down. But I think mine looks pretty good. We'll go and make sure the snapping is turned on in the bottom left. And we'll snap it to the center of the screen from left to right where we see a vertical yellow line. And then you can again make any adjustments if you need to now that it's kind of placed. But again, I think mine looks pretty good. So I am just leaving a smidge of room at the top. And then we will make a duplicate for our bottom circle at the bottom of our capsule. And then we'll connect them on the sides to make our full shape. So we'll go to our layer menu, make a duplicate of the circle layer, slide to the left and hit duplicate on it. Grab our arrow tool. We'll just move it straight down and keep it on this yellow vertical line. And then just kind of leave roughly the same amount of room at the bottom that we have at the top, like so. Okay, then to connect the sides, we are going to draw a rectangle. So we'll go to our layer menu, add a new layer, grab our selection tool, set it to rectangle and turn on color fill. Then I'm just going to start on like the very left side of this top circle or as close as I can get to it. We can adjust our rectangle in a moment, but so just kind of start kind of wherever there. Drag it across and connect to this bottom right side of our circle at the bottom here to kind of fill in that gap and let that go. And again, let's grab our arrow tool. This time let's set it to free form and then we can adjust it on the side. So with snapping turned on, if you just adjust the side, it should try to snap to the edges of our circles. So I'll do that on both sides and then we'll turn our arrow tool off to kind of see how it looks. So mine's pretty good. There's a teeny bit sticking out on the sides here, probably because it's a little too tall. So I'm gonna grab my arrow tool still on free form and maybe just downsize it a little bit on top and bottom and see that looks way better. So now I see almost nothing sticking out. I see the teeniest bit on the bottom still, so I might just bring that up a little bit. Okay, perfect. So just get yours to line up nicely. So once you have everything laid out nicely, we will go to our layer menu and just snap these three layers together so they're all on one layer. 
our capsule shape. Beautiful. So now we can just start drawing inside of it. So we are going to kind of add some shading to our sky so it'll get a little darker on the top and then we'll have some dark streaks through it. Then we'll draw the clouds and add the shadows and highlights to them. Then we'll draw the moon and the stars, both the stars in the background, like the sky stars and then the shooting stars in the front. So let's just go ahead and move on. So next up we will draw some details on our capsule itself, like the sky. So to do so, we'll go to our layer menu on this capsule layer here, click on it and turn on alpha lock so that we're only drawing within this shape. Grab the second color on the second row of the color palette. And let's go back to our selection tool with rectangle and color fill turned on. And we just want the top part of this to be darker. So I'm going to start on the outside top left corner, like outside my shape, draw across and just cover like the top, maybe third of the capsule and then let it go to let it fill in with that darker color. Click the selection tool to turn it off. And then to blur our colors together here, we are going to go to our wand icon, click Gaussian blur and drag this up a good ways to like 40 to 50% somewhere in there. So we get a nice kind of gradient from top to bottom. Okay. And then on the same layer, we are going to draw some even darker streaks just kind of through the sky. So to do that, we will grab the third color on the second row of our color palette. We're going to switch our brush to the soft brush under the airbrushing category. So the really wide one at the top, we'll set the size to maybe like 10 to 15%. I'll go to 10 maybe. And we'll just kind of draw some kind of darker streaks just through the sky something just kind of random. We'll cover up a lot of it, but it'll just look nice to have some kind of difference in the background here. So nothing too crazy, just a good little bit of that. Okay, and next we'll just jump straight into drawing our clouds. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu and now we're going to start adding clipping masks to this shape so that all of our stuff still stays within this shape, but we're not just drawing all on the same layer. So we will add a new layer right above the layer we were just on. Click on it and set it to a clipping mask. Grab the first color on the last row of our color palette now. We will go back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. I will go ahead and set it to maybe like 50%. And we're going to start with like the highest up cloud. So we're going to do three totals. So we'll have one coming off the right pretty high, one coming off the left kind of in the middle, and then a small one at the very bottom on the right. But we want to leave a good amount of room for our moon here in the top left. So for my first cloud, I'm going to start maybe right kind of where my circle meets my rectangle on the side here, right where it kind of changes to like straight, maybe right about there. And then to draw our cloud shape, I am just going to draw a curved line, another curved line, you can hold them down if you want to. I'm not, but you totally can like hold it down to get a nice smooth curve. Then I might kind of go like go over a little bit until we go off of our shape. And then I'm going to go around and connect back to the beginning. So I went all the way around my shape to connect it so that we can fill it in. Okay, and that's kind of our first cloud. So our moon's kind of going to go here. That's plenty of space for my moon. I could even maybe make my cloud a little bit bigger in some spots. Here, just to kind of take up a little bit more room in the sky. Like so. Okay, and we're going to just keep drawing our main cloud shapes and then we'll go back through and do the shadows and highlights on each of them. So in, we're going to draw it in the same color on a new layer, but I do want to be able to see it better. So like if we were to draw it, you know, then when we get down here, we won't be able to see the shape that we're drawing. So, but I still want this one active so that I can kind of see where it's at so that I know, you know, how my picture is going to look. So in order to be able to see the next layer that we draw, but still see this one, we're just going to lower the opacity of this one that we just drew. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu on this layer, click the end to open up our options and we'll just drag the opacity down to like 50%. Add a new layer, click on it and set it to a clipping mask. 
and now we will draw our next cloud. So again, I'll maybe start this like halfway through the left side now. And we'll just kind of do the same thing. Draw some nice curves going down. You can kind of vary the shapes and sizes and like the direction that they're going. And then once we get to the edge, we'll just again connect around to the beginning so that we can fill it in. Like so, but again, that is so that we can still see where our other one is and see our new one. And again, we have plenty of room for our moon here. So that is looking great. So now we'll just kind of do the same thing because we're going to draw one more. And again, we want to be able to see where we're drawing, but still see our previous one. So we'll go to our layer menu, click the end on this layer to open up the menu and drag the opacity down again to like 50%. Add another new layer, click on it and set it to a clipping mask. And for our final cloud, we'll just start like down on the right side here, maybe a little bit higher than our last cloud ended. So maybe right about here. And we'll just kind of draw a pretty small little bit of a cloud going across the bottom here like so. Wrap around to connect it and fill it in. Okay, and now we can add all of the details to them. So we're already on this one. It's still at full opacity, so let's just work on this one first. So to add a shadow and highlight to it, we're going to go to our layer menu, click on this layer that we're on, set it to alpha lock. Okay, our next color in line, the second one on the bottom row is our shadow color. So let's grab that one. We are going to use the soft brush again under the airbrushing category. So let's switch back to that. We'll keep our size at like 10%. And I'm just going to start on the edge here and just kind of start very, very lightly. And then we'll just kind of work our way into our cloud. We don't want to cover the whole thing. So I'm just trying to keep it kind of on the bottom side, leaving the tops more untouched. So it's just kind of right across the bottom there. I'll kind of go a little bit darker there. So I'll push a little harder right on the very edge there to get a nice shadow. Okay, then kind of the same thing for the highlight, except on the other side. So then we'll grab our third color on the bottom row. Same brush. Um, you might need to lower the size a little bit, but I'm just kind of going to start outside the shape and just kind of work my way in very lightly to just kind of hit these top edges. Um, but feel free to lower the size of your brush if you need to. So this just helps add a nice highlight there. And then we're just going to do that for all of them. So now we'll just go to our layer menu, go to the next one right underneath this one, which is our left one. First, let's click the N to open up the options and drag our opacity back up to 100. Click on the layer and set it to alpha lock. And we'll switch back to our darker color first. So the second one on the bottom row, I'm at 10%. And I'm just going to start on this bottom here. So it'll be pretty dark down here, but I'm just going to start really light still until we kind of work our way up here till I get to where I want to stop with the dark color. Okay, and then I'll kind of work back and get darker as we go, kind of blend it out nicely. Like so. Okay. Then we'll go in with our lighter color. So let's switch to that one, the third one on the bottom row again. And again, just starting outside, I'm just going to touch the, the tops of them all the way around. For a nice highlight. Okay, then we'll do our last cloud. So next layer right underneath the one that we were just on. Let's first click the N and drag the opacity back up to 100. Click on it and turn on alpha lock. Switch back to our darker color. Brush at 10%. And we'll just kind of do the same thing that we just did. So I'll start on the bottom because there's a lot of it showing very lightly though and work my way up until I get to a good point where I kind of want to stop there. Then I'll work back down towards the bottom and get darker and push harder as I go. Make sure it's nice and blended. Then we'll switch to our lighter color and work on the tops.
Beautiful. Now we can move straight on to our moon. So we'll go to our layer menu. We are going to add this at the top of our layers. We're not going to set it to a clipping mask, just a brand new layer. We'll grab this third color on the last row of the color palette. We should still be on it. This was our highlight for our clouds, that same color. So the third one on the bottom row. We're going to switch back to our monoline brush first to draw our shape. So at 50% is good. We're going to draw a nice good size circle here. Hold it down again until it turns perfectly smooth and then touch your finger to the screen to make it a nice perfect circle. It's in a decent size, but we can still resize it and move it around. So just go ahead and fill it in. And then with your arrow tool on uniform, feel free to adjust the size if you need to, but I think mine's actually sized pretty good. I'm probably gonna leave it right about here and then just place it nicely in kind of your upper left part of your sky here with a good amount of room around it for like some stars and a nice glow. Okay, so first we're going to do some recoloring. So it's going to get kind of a shadow and then two highlights on it. So let's first start with the shadow. So we'll do the same thing that we just did to our clouds. Go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock. Grab the next color in line, the fourth one on the bottom row, and switch back to our soft airbrush under the airbrushing category. Still set to 10%. So I'm just going to start right on the edge on the bottom right and just work my way in, getting kind of lighter as I go till we get to about the middle. So it should be nice and blended there. Then we're going to make a highlight, so that's going to be with the next color in line, the fifth one on the bottom row. We're first going to make it on the top left side. I'm just going to kind of start on the edge and work in like in kind of arcing motion like this to create a nice bright highlight there just on the top left. Again, kind of lightly to blend it in and then like thicker and darker or brighter on the edges. And then we're also going to have a slight highlight on the bottom right. So I'm going to start on the outside and just kind of work my way in. Just a tiny bit like this, so nothing too crazy. Just kind of a nice kind of skinny one, like so. Okay, so it should look like this now, and now we're going to add the circles and stuff. So to do that, we will go to our layer menu, add a new layer right above this one, click on it, and set it to a clipping mask so that we draw within our moon shape. And then click the N on this layer, to open up our options and this time we're going to change the layer style here we're going to drag this all the way up till we hit multiply so this is going to create kind of like some shadows on our moon so we will grab the next color in line this kind of gray color the sixth one on the bottom row okay we're going to use this same brush we're just going to change the size so let's start with it at like five percent and we're just going to kind of just push down in an area, kind of work in a slight circular motion to create like a nice kind of crater there. So I'm just going to make like a kind of big one on the edge there. I'm just kind of start and just make a smallish one there. They're getting a little too big, so I might make one more kind of big one with this size. And then we'll go down even further. So then we'll go to like maybe 3% and make some more. So just kind of pushing down in a circular motion. So then we get a nice circle, but it's kind of got like a wispiness to the edges, which I like. Just kind of randomly wherever you would like them. And I might even just kind of touch on the screen just barely to create a pretty small one here and there as well. Like so. Even like where this highlight is, that's fine. So since we have it set to multiply, it just creates a darker version of the color that we're drawing on top of. So like this circle up here on my big highlight is a lot lighter than my circle down here is. But that is like naturally how it would work. So that looks good. So once you like how those look, we'll add another layer of lighter spots. So we'll do the exact same thing just on a new layer with a different layer style. So we'll go to our layer menu, add a new layer above the one we were just on. Click on it and set it to a clipping mask as well. And then this time click the N and we will bring up our options again and drag our layer style to overlay. And then I'm going to drop the size of my brush even further to like 2%. So pretty, pretty small. And we'll just do a few more of these just lighter ones. So again, pushing pretty light in some areas. 
sometimes just kind of working in a good circle to get a good spot. So the overlay does kind of the same thing, but like in highlight form. So it creates a brighter color on our brighter colors and a brighter color on our darker colors, but they're not the same color. This one's like almost bright white. This one's just a light purple. So it just kind of does the same thing just in, in an opposite way. Okay, so that is it for our moon. So now we're going to create the glow around it. So we will go to our layer menu and we are going to make a duplicate of our moon layer, the main circle layer. So slide to the left and hit duplicate. Select the one on the bottom. We're going to click on it and turn off alpha lock so that we can do a blur on it and the whole thing will blur on the outside of our circle. We'll go to our wand icon, click Gaussian blur, and we'll drag this up a good ways to maybe like 20%. And then as you can see, it's not very bright. So we are going to go to our layer menu and just make a duplicate of our blurred layer now. So slide to the left and hit duplicate, and then you'll get another one. So then that gets quite a bit brighter. So I like the way that that looks, just two of them. And even still the glow that comes off of them, since we made a duplicate of our moon shape with its different colors, the glow kind of follows that. So where it's really bright, it's got a brighter glow. And I think that looks nice. So then if you like the way that looks, unless you want another one, you can make another duplicate. But I think that's just maybe a little too bright. I like the way it looks with two. So then we'll go to our layer menu and snap our two or three layers together, however many you ended up with. And then even when they're snapped together, if they're too bright, you can click the N on this layer to open up our options and you can drag the opacity down a little bit. So if you thought it was too bright before, you can do that. But then we're going to change the layer style again. So let's go to our layer menu and on our glow layer here, the blurred one, we are going to click the N on this layer and we are going to switch it to add. And that's going to make a nice and bright glow with like kind of more similar colors to like our sky. So again, once that's done, if you think it's too bright, you can go ahead and lower the opacity a little bit as well. I might lower mine to like 90, just a little bit. And then also most importantly, we just wanna make sure that it's still within our capsule shape. So it's not set to a clipping mask, but if your moon is pretty big and yours for some reason ends up like the glow is kind of hitting the outside of our capsule, that's totally fine. All we need to do is click on the layer on our layer menu and set it to a clipping mask and it will clip to that same capsule shape since it ended up right above our cloud layers on our layer menu. So it's still under our moon, our moon's still not a clipping mask but then our glow can be a clipping mask to our capsule shape, that's totally fine. Okay, next we're going to add the stars in the sky, um, like our main like smattering of stars, and then we will add our shooting stars, and then we'll kind of finish up the background and then we're done. So we're going to add three layers of our kind of smattering of stars. So we're going to add our first one underneath our clouds right above our sky, so it'll just be in the very, very distant background. So we'll find our capsule layer on our layer menu, add a layer right above it. It should automatically set itself to our clipping masks underneath our other clipping masks. We are again going to click the N on this to open up our options and set it to add again. Okay, and these next three colors on the second row are our star colors. So these first three were our sky colors. Now the last three are our star colors. So we're going to start with the fourth one on the second row. We're going to switch our brush to the Flix brush under the spray painting category. So find that. We're going to set it to maybe 10%. Let's see how that looks. A little small, we'll go a little higher than that. Maybe 15%. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's do 15% and we're just going to tap around in our sky. So I'm just tapping, I'm not dragging because that gets like a little too thick and crazy. So I'm just kind of tapping all over to create a good amount of this on our background. So just kind of right behind our moon. And then just like we've kind of been doing, if we want to lower the opacity of this layer at all because you feel like they might be too bright, we can totally do that. So just click the A to open up our options here and we can drag the opacity down a little bit. I might do like 80 to 85% so they look a little more faded. 
Okay, and then for our next layer of stars, they're going to be above our cloud layers as well. So find your top cloud layer at a layer right above it. It will automatically set itself to a clipping mask if your moon glow is also set to a clipping mask. If it's not, it'll just be a regular layer. So just click on it and make sure it's set to a clipping mask. We are again going to click the N to open up our options and again set it to add. We're just going to switch our color to the fifth one on the second row. Same brush. So we're going to change the size up to like 25%. Let's set that. And now we're just going to tap this all around everywhere again. So still around our moon, but then also in front of our clouds. Again, not dragging, just tapping. And you can't really always control where the tap goes. Sometimes it'll go like right where you tapped. Sometimes it'll go kind of, you know, kitty corner to where you tapped. So if you ever get a really bad one that's just not in a good spot, feel free to just undo it and redo it so that we don't get too much of it because sometimes they'll just overlap each other, not where you want them to be. Okay, so a good amount of those doesn't need to be too crazy. We're going to add another new layer as well. So let's just get that to where we like it. And then again, we can go to our layer menu and decrease the opacity a bit. So I made these really bright so that we could mess around with the opacity to make them how we like them. So I'll click the A on this layer that we're on to open up the options and just lower the opacity again, maybe to like 70 to 80% somewhere in there. Okay, and then we're going to add another new layer right above this one. Same thing, make sure it's set to a clipping mask. Same thing, click the N and set it to add. We'll grab our next color, the sixth one on the second row and do the same thing, same size. So these ones will be really bright. At first we will again lower the opacity, but we just wanted a good kind of variety of like hues of stars to give us some good depth and stuff. So I'll just add a smaller amount of these Nothing too crazy. I'm just going to try to fill in any gaps that you may have. And again, we will go to our layer menu, click the A to open up our options and drag our opacity down again. This time pretty slow, maybe like 60%, but at least that gives us a good variety. Okay, so our shooting stars are next. So let's go ahead and add those. Those will be on the very top of all of our layers. So let's add a new layer at the very, very top. Okay, we're going to grab this really bright color, the fifth one on the bottom row. We are going to be on our soft brush under the airbrushing category. We're going to set the size super low to like 2 to 3% somewhere in there. And we're first just going to make the main parts of our stars and then we'll make the trails after them. So we're just going to lay down the main stars. And then the trails are all going to go up and to the right a little bit. So we just want to make sure that those won't run into each other. So I'm going to start on the left side of my capsule here, kind of outside of it, because our shooting stars are going to be kind of outside of our picture a little bit. So right on the outside here, I'm just going to start, push pretty hard, push down in a kind of circular motion to make the main star, something like that. So again, it's going to go up and to the right. So then maybe we'll just make another one kind of below where that would be. So on our moon here, kind of. Maybe right about there, make another one. Or maybe go down here, make another one. Maybe go down here, make another one. Okay, and then we just, again, want to make sure they won't run into each other. So maybe I'll go up a little bit, make another one kind of close to the edge. So the tail of this one will go off of our shape again. That's good though. And then maybe I'll make another one kind of up here like so. So our tail shouldn't go off the edge there. I don't think they'll be that long. So just kind of place them sporadically here. We can always add more later if we want to, but I think that this ends up being a good amount. So then to make sure that our tails all hit the same angle, we're going to turn on our 2D grid just as a guide. So let's go to the gear icon under canvas, click to turn on the drawing guide. Okay, then just click edit drawing guide and we are just going to turn this to use as a guide for our tails. So just click this green button and move it to the left a little bit until you get a good angle, kind of where your lines are that you like for your tails. So I'm gonna set mine maybe about there. Then go ahead and click done. 
We're still in the same layer, same color. We're just going to switch our brush now to the Flix brush again under the spray paints category. We're going to set the size super low this time to like two to three percent. So just kind of see how that looks on one. So yeah, mine's at like three percent. That looks pretty good. So for each one, I'm just going to kind of follow my grid lines and make a nice tail, pretty long, but that gets kind of faded at the end. So I just really light it first. And then we're just going to thicken it up at the front where the star is so that it kind of melds into like one object there, one shape. So there's no real difference between where the star ends and the tail starts. So I'm just kind of thicken it up there, thicken it up part way through, and then just kind of let it fade off the end. So we'll just do that for each one. So then these ones over here are going off my shape, but that is okay. That's kind of what I intended. Okay, so then that looks good. So then if you want to add any more, feel free to do so. Just go back to your soft brush to make the star. Go back to your flex brush to make the tail. Follow the same grid line. But otherwise, I think that looks good. If anything, also, you can also just first turn off your grid line. So under the gear icon, just turn off the drawing guide. And then with your arrow tool, you can just kind of move them around if you need to and re-rotate them a little bit if you want to as well. So feel free to do that. And then lastly, to kind of finish up our picture, we're just going to add some more kind of brighter stars to our sky. So that's going to be on the same layer using the same color. We're just going to switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category again. Still really, really low where we had it, like 2 to 3%. So we're just going to kind of start anywhere in the sky here and just kind of start pushing in a circular motion to get a nice star. You can also just kind of touch pretty lightly to get like a kind of faint star. That's kind of nice too. So I'm just kind of add a few of these around. I'm going to add some to the main sky, but then I'm also going to add some kind of in front of the clouds as well. So they can be helpful to kind of fill in space there. Just to kind of fill out our picture. Okay, so maybe something kind of like this. And then that is it for our main picture. So now we're just going to add the finishing details, the shadow inside the capsule, and then the kind of gradient on our background where it's kind of lighter in the middle, darker on the edges. So to first make the shadow inside, we are going to go to our layer menu. We are going to add a new layer and it has to be a clipping mask to our capsule layer. So to add that, we're just going to find our top star layer, like the smattering of stars that we made that's clipped to it any layer right above that, it might set itself to a clipping mask automatically if your glow is also set to a clipping mask, but if not, just click on it and set it to a clipping mask. Click the N on this layer and we are again going to switch the layer style to multiply. Okay, let's first find the color that we're going to use. So that is going to be the fifth color on the top row, this dark gray. Back to our layer menu. So in order to get the same shape as our capsule without having to like draw it with a brush, we are going to use our main capsule shape to help us. So just kind of keep an eye on where this layer is, this one that's set to multiply. But find our capsule layer, click on it, and click select. Yours might fill in gray. If color fill is turned on, just go ahead and make sure to turn off color fill and it should go back to normal. You should see diagonal lines on the outside of the capsule. 
click invert and then you should see diagonal lines on the inside. Okay, then without really changing anything, we'll just go straight back to our layer menu, straight back to our new layer that's set to multiply there and fill in the outside of the capsule. You won't see it on your screen because it's clipped to this shape and we just filled in the outside of it. But on your layer menu, you should see that it's filled in there. If you click your arrow tool and kind of move it around, you'll be able to see it. But just make sure it's set back to normal. Make sure that the selection's turned off, so click your selection tool if you need to. We're still on our new layer here. And then to get our shadow on the inside, we are just going to click our wand icon, Gaussian blur, and drag this up a good amount to like 15% or so, and you should see a nice shadow on the inside. If you want to see more shadow, you can click your arrow tool on uniform and just downsize it a little bit and then recenter it with our guide. So with snapping turn on, it'll hopefully help us kind of snap there to where it's kind of centered. So do that if you would like to, if you want to make it a little bit um, more prevalent. And then again, I used a kind of a darker color than we maybe need to. So if you like it really dark, go ahead and leave it. Otherwise, again, you can go to your layer when you click on this layer to open up our options and you can lower your opacity a little bit. So I might set mine to like 80, 85% somewhere in there. I think that looks nice. Okay, then we are going to make the light glow on our background around our capsule now. So for our background, it'll be lighter near our capsule, darker on the edges. So to get our lightness around the capsule, we will again use our capsule shape to help us. So on our layer, when you find your capsule layer, slide left and hit duplicate, grab the bottom one. It should be set to alpha lock. Make sure that it is. Grab the second color on the top row of the color palette. Back to our layer menu on this bottom layer. Click on it and, and click fill layer and you should see it turn white. Then click on it and turn off alpha lock so that we can do our Gaussian blur and get a nice glow. So then go to our wand icon, Gaussian blur, and let's drag this up to maybe like 35% or so. And it looks pretty light right now, but like we did with our moon, we'll just make a couple duplicates of it to make it brighter. So on our layer menu for our glow layer, just slide to the left and hit duplicate. So that's what it looks like with two. I might do three. So I'll slide to the left and make another duplicate. That looks nice and bright. I kind of like that. And then whenever you get to a point where you like it, so two or three or whatever, just snap them together so they're all on one layer. And then again, you can always adjust this the opacity if you want to change it. Okay, so that's it for the lightness around it. So now to make the kind of darker edges, we'll just add another new layer right on top of the one that we're on right now. So we're still underneath our capsule layer and we will just grab our next color in line, the third one on the top row. So it's slightly darker than our base color. We're going to still be on our soft brush under the airbrushing category, but we'll increase our size quite a bit to maybe like 15%. And I'm just going to kind of draw vertical lines on each side. So I'm going to start at the very edge, draw a nice vertical line. And this color, I'm going to work in maybe like halfway between the edge of my capsule and the edge of my canvas, because we have one more darker one to add as well, even closer to the edge. So I'll do the same thing on the other side there, like so, pretty lightly to make sure it kind of blends pretty nice. Then we'll grab our next color in line, the fourth one on the top row darker still and we'll just start right on the edge and just add that just a little bit there again pretty lightly kind of blend it out like so okay and then just to make sure it's really nice and blended better than we can do by hand we are going to click our wand icon gaussian blur again and drag this up a good ways to maybe like 20 to 30 percent somewhere in there just so it gets nice and blurry so that we don't have any choppy pieces and then that is it for our drawing today. So I hope you had fun. I hope that you liked the way that yours turned out. If you want to see more tutorials from me in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget that I also have extra tutorials available over on Patreon, which is linked in the description below if you want to check that out. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. And while you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.